what is going on everyone? Nostalgia 9 to 5 coming at you with another Explaining Digimon episode. This one is going to be particularly interesting as we are going to be talking about one Digimon only. I'm talking about Omedamon, the unidentified holy mechanical Digimon. Pay attention, the holy mechanical type is one that is totally new. No Digimon belongs to this type except Omedamon, which is all the more interesting because it could leave the space for new type of Digimon. A new type with maybe new abilities, new skill sets, and maybe even a potential new storyline with new areas that could be linked to the birth of this new type of Digimon. The possibilities are obviously extremely unlimited, so we'll see how the Digimon developers will work on that. Now, as you all know, I do enjoy asking your opinions about all topics of interest because it adds so much more value. We get to read different perspectives and learn more. That's why this video will be extra long, as I'm going to include many of your comments. To make it easier for all of you, you can always use the timestamps, which can be found in the description box, that will guide you to the type of subject you'd rather hear. Okay? Alright, let's get right into it. Ray Hayes wrote the following. This honestly something I didn't expect or saw coming. I have good memories about Metabots, and seeing this made me remember them all over again. Omedamon stems from a joint 2020 April Fool's joke with the Metabots franchise. A franchise that might not really be known by everyone here. I do know the franchise quite well. Used to watch it as a kid, and it sure was one of my favorite animes, to a point I actually even might have made a channel about the Metabots franchise instead of Digimon. But Digimon came first, so Digimon it is. We are going to explain what the Metabots franchise is all about for those who never heard of it. But first, here is a comment. Jack Tar wrote the following. I loved Metabots as soon as I discovered it a few years ago. The art style was so appealing and the lore was very interesting too. I also enjoyed how it breathed new life into many of the reoccurring characters. The antagonists getting more serious and interesting, similar to when the Digidestined left the island and again when they were separated. This crossover gave me a similar feeling to finding an extra Christmas present under the tree. Surprise and happiness. When we are talking Metabots, we are talking about this universe where artificially intelligent robots are all rampant and exist to serve humans. In that universe, there is a company called Metabots Corporations who specialize in the creation of these Metabot robots. Robots consisting of six pieces total, one head, two arms, and a set of legs attached to a tin pit, which is the basic frame and one of the core components needed to form a Metabot, as without it, the robot cannot be assembled. Last but not least, there is the brain that took the form of a special hexagonal medal that acts like the mind of a Metabot. Each medal goes along with a specific personality and hidden abilities such as the Metaforce. More on that later. These medals were excavated from archaeological sites and even decades after their discovery, they are still surrounded by many mysteries. Also, in addition to the natural medals excavated from ruins, there are also artificially created one based on them. These robots are then used to fight each other in a row battle, an activity in which a meta fighter, meaning the human who controls a metabot through a meta watch, competes against another using their own metabots in a battle. It's no different than a Digimon and its tamer or a Pokemon and its master. The difference is that when a metabot loses a row battle, the medal is ejected from the tin pit. That about sums it up how the world of Metabots looks like. There is no point in explaining the story because it would be a bit irrelevant, but I do want to put the emphasis on one thing. Sure, as I said, Omedamon stems from a joint April Fool's joke, but that does not mean that the Digimon franchise and the Metabots franchise could not intertwine. Digimon, I would even say instead of Metabots, does have very advanced robots. Just think of the Android Digimon Andromon, or worse, the mechanical masterpiece that is Machinremon. Now, of course, Digimon might have a totally different definition of fighting, but Metabot does have interesting aspects to it, which could make them quite relevant in a crossover. And speaking of crossover, the Metabots universe introduced three interesting Metabots in the Metabot S Unlimited Nova mobile game. There is Garuru Metal, obviously derived from Metal Garurumon, 
not just in appearance but also in skills as it can use absolute cold air and unleash a relentless attack with countless missiles. There is Grey Wars, really a miniature version of War Greymon. It has a head which prevents attacks and with the two arms it can unleash energy filled attacks making it an excellent offensive and defensive machine. And to finish there is Omega Knight which is Omnimon but in the Metabots version. Pay attention, it does not mean that it is stronger than Garuru Metal or Grey Wars. It is not a fusion here, but a metabot on its own. Let me show you a small exchange between Jack Ferring and Andres Marrero. It began as such. Jack Ferring said, I'm just as, if not more, interested in the origins of the alternative component Digimon. Grey Wars and Garuru Metal, metabot versions of War Greymon and Metal Greymon, who can fuse into both Omedamon and their own fusion. Omega Knight, according to Wikimon, to which Andres rightly replied with the following. A bit of a correction there, Omega Knight isn't a fusion of Grey Wars and Garuru Metal. They are three different models based off of data of the three Digimon. Really it is something I am surprised that Digimon hasn't tried yet because constructing robot vessels for them to operate in the human world without putting themselves in danger makes so much sense. Andres is right. And that is why I believe that both universes could certainly intertwine and both sides would, in one way or another, take advantage or inspiration from one another. It could make sense. That's what I personally believe anyway. I'm wondering how you guys would think about that. One thing is certain, when we are looking at Omedamon and at Garuru Metal, Grey Wars and Omega Knight, they are, as Victor Aponte Jr. wrote, a great representation of two different series and fandoms coming together. Indeed, Grey Wars, Garuru Metal and Omega Knight were used in the Metabots franchise in tribute to Digimon. And Omedamon is used in the Digimon franchise in tribute to the Metabot franchise. The irony is that Omedamon was first included in the Digimon reference book but was removed only to be put back into it, making it now an official canon Digimon, meaning that it began as an April Fool's joke but is now a real Digimon that could interact with other Digimon and maybe have an important influence in a storyline. That is actually quite interesting. Omedamon was designed by Az Maria. We talked about him in the Explaining Tyranomon video, make sure to check it out if you haven't already. Az Maria is one who designed many ex antibody Digimon, which is leaving me with the question of whether Omedamon is also a carrier of the X antibody that would enable it to survive the X program, which killed about all Digimon in existence except for a select few. As of now, we have no idea as it has not been stated, but we'll see where it will end up going. Locon X Danams wrote the following This is what I expect from a Jagress of Metabi and Rokusho. Definitely one of the better Omegamon style Jagras. Before explaining Omegamon's biography, let us first look at the components which make the sum. Who are Meta B and Rokusho? Let me give you some information about them by first telling you that they have their own page in the Digimon Wiki. You can actually play with them in the Digimon Re Arise game. We're not going to call them Digimon, but they are called digital life forms, which I think is very interesting knowing that there are other creatures in the Digimon universe that are not per se called Digimon. Think of the D Reaper as a good example. Let us take a look at Metabi first. Who is Metabi? Its name is a shortened version of Metal Beetle. We're talking about a digital life form based on the Rhinoceros Beetle. This would mean that Metabi is sort of like the brother of Kabuterimon who is also based of the Rhinoceros Beetle. That is very interesting to know. Despite having lots of interesting tools of offense like shooting, machine guns or firing missiles from the guns on its horn, Metabi is still an old generation beetle type metabot that was developed when metabots were first released. This means that Metabi is almost like a prototype. A very standard shooting oriented type that does not have outstanding strength. It does have one ability that would change the course of a battle, I'm talking about the Meta Force, a special skill that medals can obtain. A skill acting as a kind of ability that is independent from the Metabot's parts. Meta B can shoot a powerful beam of light from his hands when using the attack. Very powerful. The only problem with that technique would be that it uses so much energy that the Metabot end up unable to perform actions for a long time. Long enough to receive an attack, meaning that the Meta Force is a kind of all or nothing ability. Then there is the other digital life form known as Rokusho. 
formerly named Head Skizzers. That is because it is a stag beetle digital life form, which means that it is like a brother to Kuwagamon, who is also based on the stag beetle. I don't know if it is a coincidence that Rokusho and Metabi are both rivals, like Kabuterimon and its Digivolution line is to Kuwagamon and its Digivolution line. As you guys know, Kuwagamon and Kabuterimon do not like each other at all. They are big rivals, and they are both based on specific types of beetles. The same types that inspired Metabi and Rokusho. If it is a coincidence, I don't know, but I do find it very interesting. Now, just like Metabi, Rokusho is also an old generation Metabot that was developed when Metabots were first released. The difference is that it isn't your standard shooter. Instead, it is a standard fighting oriented type that also does not have outstanding strength. It is a close range combatant using swords and great mobility. It can make use of the meta force with which it can send a destructive energy wave by swinging his sword. Obviously, just like with Meta B, it will end up being vulnerable after using the Meta Force. Question is how all of those will translate into Omedamon, a Digimon that, and pay close attention, is not a DNA digivolution between the two. That is very important to know, let me explain why. Omedamon is a mega level unidentified holy mechanical Digimon whose true form is unknown leaves us with a question what they mean with true form, maybe another possible variant, maybe another digivolution, we don't know. And it is said that it wandered from the digital world of another dimension. Now maybe I need to stop quickly to this dimension aspect because that is something that is always very interesting and very typical in the Digimon franchise. There are so many dimensions and they keep on coming, which I would say is quite normal considering the digital world's digital background. But I would say that this is probably another way for the Digimon developers to tell us that there are probably infinite Digimon in existence. Just think of it, when Digomon is a Digimon said to have the ability to manipulate time and space and is able to warp by passing through other dimensions as well as to create a special space. Grace Novamon is a galaxy on its own and just like that there are many dimensions, meaning you just don't know how things will get going in the Digimon world. Heck, Ryan Hernandez even wrote the following, Omedamon, this Digimon, could even exist in one of the Digimon universes like Witchelney, for example. To which I'd say, why not? It could certainly have a nice spot next to medieval Dukemon, don't you think? They might even make a very nice duo. And Andres Marrero even suggested the following fantastical landscape for a fight with Omedamon. A nice and fitting area for a fight, I would say. Definitely a place that would be quite fitting in the Digimon universe, showing how big and mysterious it can be. What do you guys think of this area? Let us know in the comment section. Brandon Gregg has a theory about Omedamon, which I thought would be very interesting to discuss. The following was written. You know, I have a theory that the crack team slash metal empire has something to do with this. Like now, multiverse is a thing and we've seen Ryo and other Digidestant, season 6, the whole cast were there. My theory is that the crack team might encounter one of the scientists from the Metabot universe and exchange information. Crack team trade War Greymon, Metal Garurumon and Omega Data, Metabot universe would trade Metabi, Rokusho and the Metaforce Data in the purpose for crack team to have their own Omegamon in their agents like Chaos Dramon. Metabot universe for, well, make more money and Metabots. Think about it. How many Omegamon we have so far? Even Susanamon, who isn't an Omegamon, does have War Greymon and Garurumon compound. Chaosmon as well. I would say that this would make for an interesting story. Just think of it. It would connect the Digimon franchise quite well to the Metabots franchise. And it is true that there are lots of Metal Garurumon and War Greymon data being used, considering how many Omegamon variants there are. Guys, if you want, please share your opinions about Brandon Gregg's theory and make it more interesting by adding your own theories. Now, it is said that Omedamon was born from the data of a Metabots game which became popular in another dimension at the end of the 20th century that mutated and became Omedamon. This means that we are not talking about a fusion but a mutation of data which, perhaps by coincidence, took the data of Rokusho and Metabi and giving it the appearance it now has. And speaking of appearance, Media Gemini wrote the following. If you look closely at the main body, it shares design elements of the Metabot Cross Messiah, 
which in itself is a combination of Meta B and Rokusho. Cross Messiah has two different colored eyes, one for each of them, but functions as its own entity as well. Yes, just a side note, Cross Messiah is a model designed with the aspects of both Meta B and Rokusho respectively. It has a gun on its left arm and a sword on its right arm. Again, it isn't a fusion of the two, but it is a model that took aspects of the both of them, just like Omedamon did. Now, if we have to talk personality-wise, Omedamon is a Digimon that has the courage to undoubtedly face any difficulty. It will keep fighting without shutting down, unless, unless, it receives a certain amount of damage to its head. The thing is that Omedamon has self-repair abilities thanks to its armor, referred to as Cyplasium Digizoid. It is a variation named after Cyplasium Alloy, a super metal with a self-repair feature through the use of nano machines, and is capable of fully recovering any damage sustained in combat before the next battle. It would be very interesting to compare Cyplasium Digizoid to the many other Digizoid variants, as all of them have their own functions. I would say that the healing ability would be Omedamon's most impressive feature. Its offensive abilities are rather simple. The beetle cannon where it fires a volley at the enemy and its scissor sword to play enemy, not very special. And there's no saying whether it can master the meta force. So maybe a small conclusion, I'd say that in appearance it does look impressive, but in skill, aside of the healing, to me, it does not. Now Andres gave us a nice little resume about Omedamon. It's quite a long message, so bear with us. Omedamon is an excellent example of how a digital life form or in this case replicas can become Digimon. The life forms that created Omedamon were just digital recreations, just copies of Meta B and Rokusho created from the data within their medals and they had no Digicores, but when they merged to form Omedamon they developed a Digicore and thus became a Digimon. In a sense it is an example of how Digimon can be formed from normal programs and data backlogs. Everything else about Omedamon is made to parallel Omnimon right down to being called a holy mechanical warrior, which is an oxymoron because anything mechanical is by nature earthly. A robot isn't in any way divine, it is a construct made by mortals. Omedamon is called that just to parallel the fact that Omnimon is a holy knight. However, there are some differences between the two, mainly because Omedamon is a comprised on data from Metabots. The unique Chrome Digizoid that Omedamon has is a digital recreation of the alien alloy that Metabots are made out of, and Omedamon has an extremely potent auto repair system, while Omnimon himself cannot repair damage that he has received. With Omedamon, all damage will be completely undone by the time the next battle happens, while with Omnimon, any damage done sticks and has to be repaired the old fashioned way. Everything else about Omedamon is defined by the fact that he is composed of the digital recreations of Meta B and Rokusho, and by extension, Metabots in general, including his big move being a combination of their respective Meta Forces. Sometimes an April Fool's joke is too good to pass up on, and this is certainly the best Omnimon like design they have made yet. Hey guys, this is the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed it. I love it when Digimon are making crossovers with other franchises. I also hope they will make some crossover with Yu-Gi-Oh! as that franchise had also very interesting creatures. For now, with Omedamon, I would say that I am very pleased with its appearance. I'm slightly disappointed with its ability, which I think was not developed properly, could have been developed a bit further, a bit better, especially for a mega level Digimon, but still a good and nice Digimon, which I appreciate a lot. It gives us lots to talk about. Now make sure to write down your opinions in the comment section. I also would like to thank you all for the links you have been sending. That obviously helped me to make this video. And again, I did watch Metabots. It's a great series, really good times. So with that, I would also say, Andres, thank you for the link. I might watch it again. Now, in case you guys are new, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe to help this channel out. That way I know that you guys enjoy my work. And don't forget that all my videos are placed in particular Digimon playlists, which are always updated. That way you can catch up on newer and older videos.